everyone. New year, new you. You look good. I want to welcome you to the Bay Area Christian Church live stream. And today we have an inspiring service for you. We want you to get the most out of the live stream today. So we put some extra resources on bacc.cc slash live. We have simple notes and doodle notes to jot down scriptures and thoughts that you have during the live stream that you can share with your families and friends after the live stream has ended. Go to bacc.cc slash live. If you want to deepen your relationship with God, go to deepspirituality.com for Bible studies, devotionals, videos, and podcasts, and more, and deepen your relationship with God like never before. I want you to smash that like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Wake up everybody, no more sleeping in bed No more back for thinking, time for thinking ahead The world has changed so very much from what it used to be There's so much hatred, war and poverty
Happy New Year. 2021 is here, and there's no better way to start off than with some great music to get our hearts pumping and our faith energized. I'm Ray Kim, and you'll be hearing from myself, Sam, and Scott, as today we'll be talking about the theme, We Can Be Heroes. And I'm pretty excited about this theme, especially with a new year, because despite the challenges that we've each encountered and experienced in 2020 and still continue to endure, this new year is an opportunity to make a shift from not just being a survivor, but being a hero. You know, one of my favorite heroes growing up was Batman. What are you? I'm Batman. Because he was always saving the day, getting in a bind, then breaking out of it, coming through to save others. And I wanted to be just like him. I know we all have a hero in us that we all want to become, but it may be difficult for us to see the hero God destined each of us to become because of the testing, the challenges, and the pressures that are hitting our faith and that our lives are absorbing during these present times. But this can all change if we allow God to shape and transform us into heroes by learning through these difficulties. In James 1 verse 2, it says this, Consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you can become mature and well-developed and not deficient in any way. You know, 2020 was not a year that we just merely survived, but it's actually a year in which God was working at all times, refining us, shaping us, and reinventing us through the difficulties, the disappointments, and distresses only to reveal the true colors of our faith. Why? So we can grow more spiritually mature, resilient, and stronger from it all. You know, have you felt tested? Have challenges been coming at you from all sides? Have you been just wanting to get out of it? Do you feel like you're constantly under pressure? You know, the good news about that is that that means God is helping you become a hero for someone. That's the making of a hero. And so today I want to talk about rediscovering our purpose, become a hero. You know, God believes every one of us is called to be someone's hero. Everyone needs a hero because at some point we need heroes to inspire us to believe beyond our limitations, to hope beyond our circumstances, to help us find strength in God when the grips of apathy are closing in. Have you felt those grips recently? You just want to like be apathetic, not care. I don't want to do anything, think about anyone. That's when you know that you can either become a hero or become a zero. And I don't want to be a zero. I don't think you want to be a zero. But 2021 is a year for us to all become heroes. You know, when we are finding ourselves going through these things, we have to embrace the fact that God is doing something big in us. He's transforming us from the inside out. You know, heroes are people who transform compassion into heroic action. But this takes faith, and the challenges, the difficulties, hearts we're going through are all meant to build within us a resilient, strong, uh, heroic faith. And it starts with first becoming aware of the current condition of our faith. You know, in those moments this year in, in the pandemic, I've had times where I had to run to fixing a flooding toilet in my house, having to stop a, a, a nosebleed with one of my kids. And in those moments, I could feel anything but heroic. Yet that's all part of making, that's all part of the making of a hero. Learning to do what we don't initially want to do, but choosing to do so out of love, out of compassion. You know, one of the lessons I had to learn through 2020 is also that being a hero has little to do with my talent. It has little to do with strength. It has little to do with your position. It has everything to do with making yourself and myself available for God, to use us to care, to change people's lives, regardless of what situation, regardless of what we're going through, we can still choose to care if we make ourselves available to God. Yet some of us have become so preoccupied, not with God and not trying to understand what God's doing in our lives through all these things, but we become preoccupied with the negativity, the divisiveness, and the distress all around us. And I've even allowed these things to seep into our relationships, into our homes and families, in our marriages, and even seep into our church because we've forgotten our purpose and gotten so so consumed and resentful about the testing, the trials, and the pressures, not realizing that God is shaping us. He's transforming us to have a faith that's heroic so we can actually go and help somebody else get that faith as well, to change and to save lives. You know, God always chooses the unlikely to become the heroic. And we see this in the Bible in the life of Gideon, how God helped Gideon rediscover his purpose. In Judges 6 and verse 6 in the New Living Translation, it says this, 
So Israel was reduced to starvation by the Midianites. You know, at that time, the Midianites had oppressed and conquered the Israelites, and they had basically taken away all their crops, all their food, all their resources. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. Then the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the great tree at Ophrah, which belonged to Joash of the clan of Abiezer. Gideon, son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom of a winepress to hide the grain from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero, the Lord is with you. Just as the Israelites were powerless, crying out for help against the oppression and the, and the uh, rage that the Midianites were bringing against them, there are many today that are still crying out for help and for hope today. Christmas was not enough. Christmas Eve was not enough. New Year's Eve and the parties were not enough. And they still came out on the other side of those holidays crying out for hope. People are going through still right now, even if it's a new year, they still feel like it's still 2020 continued. And there are many crying for help and for hope today, powerless against these forces that, that make us feel defeated, distressed, or disillusioned. In our present times, we can't help but recognize these challenges, losses, and suffering that so many of us are experiencing, so many of our loved ones, our extended family, our coworkers are experiencing, yet there's no greater time than now when the world needs heroes, and that's what every Christian is called to be. There is no such thing in the Bible as a Christian who is not a hero. If you are not heroic, then you can't call yourself the kind of Christian that God destined you and I all to be. God hears the cries and he responds by raising up heroes to be his answer for the people he cares about. Doing good is a way we can answer God's call. Jesus did so much good that crowds gathered around him. One of the most inspiring changes we have made in recent years is to not only do good as a collective church, but also to empower everyone to find their own passion and do good by helping our community in our own creative ways. God's call can come in all shapes and sizes, all we have to do is answer it. Here are just a few doing good snippets to remind us that it doesn't have to take much to respond to God's call to love. First off, we wanted to tell you about some families in Contra Costa South who have been busy answering the call to take care of their neighbors in need. Brian and Jessica Park and their house church adopted a family of seven for Christmas through an organization called Monthly Miracles Homeless Charity. Carlos and Marisa Lorena rallied their house church in Stockton to adopt a single dad and his six kids. They served the family and provided them with food and Christmas gifts. Jen Hartman spearheaded having her Bible Talk make Christmas goodie bags with words of affirmation and positive sayings for over 150 patients at Fremont Hospital. And Brock and Ann Roby's house church brought Christmas gifts to all the residents at the Lily House Home for Adults with Special Needs in Livermore. Over in Santa Clara County, three families answered God's call to do good by making stockings for Northern California farm workers. The Doomlaus, Sebastians, and Sighs got together, and instead of making gingerbread houses, the kids stuffed stockings with toys, candies, and socks for an organization called Christmas Con Corino. When the Lowe's House Church and Tracy decided to answer God's call to do good, they ended up bringing their whole community with them. In December, Lacey Lowe happened to see a flyer about a food drive. Lacey and her husband, Tony, along with their friends, Tony and Diana Fernandez, rallied their Bible talk and reached out to all their neighbors for donations. They collected food from over 180 families for the food drive. And some of the families who donated food were so thankful to be involved that they also made cards of gratitude. In Riverbank, Mark and Angie Gentry heard from their son's basketball coach that there were families in need at their local high school. The Gentrys and Julio and Loria Villa rallied their neighbors to collect gifts and food for these families, and also got their local Save Mart to donate food cards. The families who received Christmas dinner and food said they felt so blessed and were so grateful that there are good people out there doing good. And finally, we've got a story for you about a pair of moms and daughters in San Francisco who answered God's call by making Christmas stockings for teens in foster care. Kathy Leesum and Joanne Leong, along with their 10-year-old daughters, hoped to fill the stockings with donated items and maybe a small gift card with the little money they had. They bought felt stockings and asked friends and family members to decorate them and add notes so the teens would know someone cared about them. Soon the donations started rolling in and they ended up collecting over $1,500. They filled 48 stockings with Target gift cards, art supplies, toiletries, gloves, and toys. The social worker at Edgewood Center for Children and Families said she was speechless and couldn't believe they put together all those stockings. These are just a few examples of people who felt compelled by God's call and decided to answer it. 
What do you think God is calling you to do? What can God do through you if you decide to answer his call? I'm Sam Manuel, excited to be with you this morning. My point, heroes defeat doubt. You know, like Gideon who was hiding in a wine press, undefeated doubt makes us hide. You know, first part of 2020, I spent time hiding from my wife's emotions, hiding from my family's needs, hiding sin, hiding from people's problems. You know, important we learn to defeat doubts so we can develop faith and courage and have the impact God intended us to have. You know, let's get started in Judges 6, verse 12. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Gideon says, pardon me, my Lord. Gideon replied, but if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and gives us and given us into the hand of Midian. You know, the angel told Gideon that God was with him. Gideon says, actually, God's abandoned me. Gideon was doubting God. Can you relate? You ever said, if God is with me, then why am I not dating currently? If God is with me, then why did I lose a loved one or my business to the current pandemic? You know, I can relate. When my mom was suffering from ALS disease, I had big time doubts. I was struggling to believe and find understanding in what my mom was going through. You know, unresolved pain can cause us to doubt God is with us. What can cause pain? You know, what can cause pain is pain of infirmities, emotional or physical health challenges, pain of injustice, the sin of others against us, pain of imperfections, our own sins and guilt. Man, those are big for me. My own sins and guilt can cause me the most pain. You know, pain of inadequacy, moments of failure in life that we're having a hard time recovering from. When we're unresolved, these can cause our hearts to doubt God. The good news is these doubts rooted in pain can be worked out with God. How? Honesty about our doubts. You know, Gideon was honest about his doubts. You know, one of the big reasons people say they stopped coming to church is that they can't ask honest questions anymore or express doubts in the church. That's one of their word. That's one of their worries. You know, we need to be honest about our doubts with God and friends so we can find the assurance needed in God's word to defeat the doubts. You know, our pain and our doubts are an opportunity to develop deeper faith when we take them to God. What doubts are you in need of being honest about? What pain do you need God's help letting go of from 2020? Let's keep getting after it. Judges 6 verse 14, the Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. You know, God called Gideon to save lives. I believe this. God called every Christian, every person to ultimately save lives. That's what we're supposed to do. Let God use us to save lives, whether it's through a kind word, whether it's through a uh, time spent together. Our lives have tremendous impact because they can save lives. You know, Gideon's response was a list of all the reasons he wasn't qualified. Ever done that? Someone call you and ask you to do something that requires great courage and you start listing all your imperfections, all your inadequacies, all your infirmities, all the rea- reasons we can't do it. You know, my life is full of moments like that. You know, I felt a little bit like that when I got the call to do the live stream. I was like, are you serious? Do you know who I am? Do you know what my problems are? Do you know how I've been at home? Do you know what my sin is? You start thinking about all your doubts. How do we get past this self-doubt? Judges 6 verse 14, the angel told Gideon to go in the strength that he had. Obedience leads us to greater faith in God, not waiting around till we feel stronger. Too often we want to feel strong enough. We're too reliant on ourselves. When we rely on ourselves, ultimately we'll doubt because we know we fail. But when we rely on God, we'll never doubt because God never fails. In John 7 verse 17, anyone who chooses to do the will of God will find out whether my teaching comes from God or I speak on my own. Again, obedience leads to greater faith in God and defeating our doubts. Hey, not better circumstances, not getting what we want, not our life going smoothly and every in a perfect way. If you want to know God better and if you want to know whether God's word is true, take two months to obey it. You ever said, man, is God real? You know, the only way you'll know God is real based on John 7, 17 is to put his Bible into practice. You know, we need to do spiritual work 
and to do the spiritual work of digging into God's word to defeat doubts. They can't be beat any other way. Why? So God can use our lives, use your life to save other people's lives. What scriptures do you need to commit to obeying to develop a greater faith in God in 2021? When we decide to answer God's call, sometimes we face doubts and obstacles. But our choice to trust that God can help us overcome any barrier can lead to powerful results. Check out these doing good snippets about people who wouldn't let obstacles or doubt stop them from loving others. In San Francisco, a group of young couples decided to overcome pandemic fatigue by using their free time to host virtual fundraisers to help those in need. They started with a virtual open mic that raised over $500 for People's Breakfast Oakland, a nonprofit that serves hot breakfasts to homeless communities. Then this group of friends hosted two virtual trivia nights that raised over $1,500. They gave this money to this year's holiday toy drive, BACC special contribution, and they also put together and handed out food care packages to the homeless in San Francisco. Next up, we've got a story of someone who developed a hero's faith by finding purpose in his pain. Having lost his dad last year, Dominic Serrano knew that the holidays can be difficult for many people. So Dom decided to raise money to help feed the less fortunate in his community. He partnered up with Mike Parham, who runs his own catering business to sell Hawaiian meals for December 24th. The proceeds went to the Monument Crisis Center, an organization in Concord that helps distribute food to nearby families all around Contra Costa County. Dom raised over $600 to help feed many families in need during the holiday and inspired us that we can make a difference when we turn even our difficult experiences into opportunities. 72 hours before City Team's annual Christmas Day feeding of the homeless in San Jose, a positive COVID-19 case shut down the entire operation. For the first time in years, hundreds of our homeless neighbors would go without this Christmas meal. That's when Ryan Sebastian got a phone call. Ryan and Christine Sebastian own Movable, a company that's part of the San Jose food truck community. In less than 72 hours, and with the help of generous donations, Ryan and Christine were able to mobilize trucks and enough workers to provide over 300 hot Christmas meals. You can see the difficulty and despair of the families and individuals in these homeless situations, said Ryan. He went on to say, I'm insulated from this level of need. I've been working in San Jose for a long time, and I've seen homelessness, but there are pockets where it feels very overwhelming. In Redwood City, the Burks and the Jones families also found a way to serve the homeless. These two families live in homes that share a backyard and have been sheltering in place together. The week before Christmas, the Jones' son asked his parents, what can we do to help the homeless this Christmas? So the Jones and Burks and their friends turned their backyard into a meal-making machine. They made individually packaged meals for the homeless community in Redwood City on Christmas Eve and then went and handed them out on Christmas Day. Taking action to do good is part of overcoming our doubts and developing a hero's faith. What opportunities to love is God giving you? Hi, I'm Scott Colvin. I love seeing these pictures and videos of heroes in our community. I'm inspired by people who decided that they were not just going to survive through the holidays, but that they were going to make a difference. They had the faith to get out, to make and give a meal, to collect and share some blankets, and to give some much needed encouragement to frontline workers. It's the good they did, yes, but more than that, it's the faith that they have, because faith is what we need going into 2021. And that brings us to our last point today, heroes have a contagious faith. You know, we're fighting a virus contagion right now, of course, and while we need to stop the spread of that virus, we need faith to spread. And that's what heroes do. They are super spreaders of faith. I tell you what, I can be a super spreader of negativity. Just ask my wife. I have ready access and can recount to you all of our problems, issues, and reasons why we can't do something. I need to learn how to have a contagious faith. Now let's look at the scriptures. This first one is referring to Gideon among others. It's in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 34. It says, in their weakness, their faith imparted power to make them strong. You know, Gideon did not feel strong. He was a mess. He felt weak. If we went to the people in those pictures and videos, I'm sure they wouldn't say they were at the height of their strength. It was their faith in their weakness that gave them power. It says, faith sparked courage within them, and they became mighty warriors in battle, pulling armies from another realm into battle array. For us to be heroes, we need to learn to have a faith that is contagious that spreads to all of those around us and sparks courage. That faith fills the void, the vacuum. As this pandemic slogs on, a crisis of faith is developing. 
We know across the United States and the world, fewer people are attending church, even live streams, and even fewer are planning to attend after this pandemic. And where there is a lack of faith, negativity fills that void. That is why when we lose our faith, mistrust, divisions, and discouragement seep into our hearts and homes. It's why some of us have been tempted to quit. We're having a crisis of faith. But we can't succumb to the bitterness and the resentment. We need to understand, what we need to understand, is that these challenges that we are going through are not there to make us bitter. No, God is wanting to use them to make us better. Look at this amazing scripture in Psalm 66, verses 10 and 12. It says, O Lord, we have passed through your fire. Like precious metal made pure, you've proved us, perfected us, and made us holy. You've allowed our enemies to prevail against us. We've passed through fire and flood. Yet in the end, you always bring us out better than we were before, saturated with your goodness. I love that scripture. So how does God give us a contagious faith? Well, we need to ask ourselves some questions. First, how is God bringing us out better than we were before? See, we're not trying to reproduce something from the past. God is making us better as people, as Christians. We're becoming like the old $6 million man. You remember it, Steve Austin? We can rebuild him better, faster, stronger. God's making us better as community members and as a church. Let's just think, God has used 2020 to develop our digital team and to expand our reach and ability to reach more people with the message of hope and faith. People are moving on with the idea of Second Act Cities, retiring to a place in the Bay Area and developing a house church where there was none there before. Young people are learning how to lead and inspire. Just look at our Sunday morning jetpack crew. You know, all of these people are not asking for permission, and this is not coming from a person. It's coming from their faith that they're getting from a relationship with God. Because that kind of faith doesn't come from a human being. It comes from digging in deep and getting it from a relationship with God. It doesn't come from watching a live stream. It doesn't come from listening to somebody. If we're going to believe more in 2021, it's got to come from us changing our relationship with God and learning how to build faith. The second question we need to ask ourselves is how will we saturate our area with God's goodness? And the first thing we have to do is saturate ourselves with God's goodness. We've got to get out and pray and read our Bible until God is in our pores, changing our minds, changing our emotions, our hearts, and our viewpoints. When we change our relationship with God, it goes from being a moment in the morning to an all-day affair. I tell you what, I can get saturated with selfishness, saturated with self-pity, saturated with self-interest, selfish ambition, just saturated with myself. But it's time for us, if we're going to get faith and be heroes in 2021 to be saturated with God. Then, when we saturate ourselves, we can bring God to our homes, our neighborhoods, our communities, workplaces, and schools. And when we're saturated with God and that faith, that's when the middle schooler says to his dad, Dad, what are we going to do this Christmas to help others? It's when the, the woman pulls together her friends because she heard about the family in her school district that was in need over Christmas and pulled together to adopt that family and give them a holiday that they would never forget. That kind of faith spreads. You are the exact right person with the right talents, challenges, weaknesses, and even sins to be a hero for your family, for your workplace, for your school, and for your neighborhood. God has put you and me exactly where we are supposed to be in order for him to use us to be heroes. All we've got to do is believe it. We've got to get with God, partner up with our friends, and go, how are we going to saturate our community with God's goodness? Finally, in Hebrews 10, 38 and 39, it says, but my righteous one will live by faith and I will take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. So you might be thinking, 
I can't be a hero. I can't change the world. I can't change my community. I'm having a hard time getting up in the morning and getting on Zoom, putting on pants and not putting on pounds. Who am I? But remember, you are the exact person God wants to use to bring change. Heroes like Gideon start small. You can share a weakness, a foible, a misstep to help somebody else have faith. You can ask somebody to help you learn about the Bible and learn who God is. You can be a part of a team and use your talents to contribute. You can summon the courage and the faith to be open about that thing that's been holding you back. You can reach out and talk to a neighbor or see someone who's lonely and become their friend. All of us can be heroes. All of us can be close to God. Because Psalm 16, 3 says, it's the godly people in the land that are my true heroes. We are all heroes. Check out these Doing Good snippets about the incredible things God can do when we work together. The amazing men and women in Alameda County have been making a huge difference in their community. Deltrina Johnson has been volunteering with the Oak Center and distributing at least a few hundred meals a week to families in need. Deltrina, Bill, and Cassie Thomas, along with Cornelia Banks, collected toys for the Defermery Community Center and for families in need in the church. Diane Woon gave out meals to senior citizens and even helped translate for the Chinese community. So they knew where to get services. Alicia Edgerson collected donations to put together beautiful baskets of much needed items for single parents in Alameda County. And Florence Erickson's Oakland Food Works has served over 3,800 holiday meals and distributed about 400 toys to underprivileged families this holiday season. While kids are on winter break from school, eHoops SF and players from the USF men's and women's basketball team volunteer to host eHoops virtually. eHoops Online allows kids and families with special needs to experience inclusion while sheltering in place at home. Over in Silicon Valley, we've been inspired by the Hofstetter's House Church. For years, they have partnered with City Team to serve the homeless in San Francisco's Tenderloin District. The Hofstetter's, Guy Eskies, Mary Beth Eady, and their friends were one of the only groups to continue to serve when the pandemic hit. Just before before Christmas, Donna Carey Hofstetter found items on Facebook that someone else was giving away. She asked if she could donate these items to the homeless. The woman agreed and without Donna Carey knowing, also reposted Donna Carey's request. 500 people responded with items to contribute. People began dropping off socks, clothing, and supplies at Donna Carey's house. Neighbors walked by and dropped off supplies too. The week before Christmas, the Hofstetters and their friends delivered three U-Haul trucks full of supplies to San Francisco's homeless. And finally, we have an incredible story about how many of you came together to take care of healthcare workers during the holiday season. The weekend before Christmas, Gail Yule was tagged in a Facebook group called Adopt a Healthcare Worker. Gail adopted 20 workers on the front lines of the pandemic and sent out messages to her friends asking for donations to make them Christmas care packages. Within 48 hours, donations poured in from all over the Bay Area. Gail and her crew of teen helpers sent out 31 care packages to healthcare workers across the country with a card from the B. ACC expressing how much we appreciated them. I love my profession, and to know that it's appreciated just makes it more gratifying. Thank you. Mine came clear to Nebraska from them. Truly a wonderful church to send out so many wonderful gifts. I came home from a very exhausting eight-day work week to a glorious and heartfelt care package. It was just what I needed to brighten my day. Thank you to my friends at the Bay Area Christian Church. When I came home from work, I saw a package at my door. To my surprise, it was a package from Bay Area Christian Church, Palo Alto, California. When I opened it and read the card, it brought me to tears. All we ask for is to be appreciated. And for this to be sent all the way to Mississippi just for me has brought joy to my heart. After all these care packages were in the mail, donations from the members of the church 
church kept pouring in. The Colette family and their house church made 25 more care packages from these donations and they made them for the staff of the Livermore Nursing Home. Members of the church in Alameda County donated money and items, so they put together Christmas bags for workers at the Ridge Acute Rehab Nursing Home. The impact that God has made through each of us doing good in our local communities, in our own creative way, is staggering. Doing good is not about being a member of an organization. Doing good is who we are. We're so grateful for each of you and the amazing and unique ways you've done so much good this year. We can't wait to see what God does through the church in 2021. Now let's say a prayer for our communion. Let's pray. God, thank you that you are a hero to us and that you have put us in the exact place at the exact time where we can reach out and be a hero to someone else. God, thank you for Jesus. He's the one that we emulate and that we imitate and is our model. We pray that we can be like him in every way. We pray in Jesus' name, amen.
to thank all of you for your tremendous giving in 2020, and I greatly encourage by your faith to continue to give and invest in the future as we begin 2021 and beyond. Now we'll be able to tap our feet to the PayPal Giving Fund tunes. Well, that's it. We want to thank you all for joining us today. You know, a new year brings new possibilities. And as we learned today, the greatest impact we can make is in the lives of others. We look forward to having impact together. You know, as we close out, please make sure to like the video and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. Thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you next week. If you hear this message wherever you stand, I'm calling every woman, calling every man With a generation, we can't afford to wait The future started yesterday, we're already late We've been looking for a song to sing Search for a melody, search for someone to lead We've been looking for the world to change If you feel the same Then go on and say If you're out there Sing along with me If you're out there I'm dying to believe that you're out there Stand up and say it loud If you're out there Tomorrow's starting now No more call to war Less is love and peace that we're really fighting for We can destroy hunger We can conquer hate Put down the arms and raise your voice We're joining hands today I was looking for a song to sing I searched for a leader But the leader was me Looking for the world to change We can be heroes Just go on and say If you're out there Sing along with me If you're out there I'm dying to believe That you're out there Stand up and say it loud If you're out there Tomorrow's starting
saying, Lord, if you're out there, tomorrow's starting Wherever you stand I'm calling every woman Calling every man With a generation We can't afford to wait The future started yesterday And we're already late Thank you for watching our live stream service. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on the latest styles. And show some love to Deep Spirituality's YouTube channel to find more faith building and inspiring content. See you next week.